For those who prefer Linux or are simply curious about Linux and other open source technologies, this is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome to episode number 288 of Category 5 Technology TV. So nice to have you here. It's Tuesday, what is it, the 26th of March, 2013. Welcome to the show. Welcome, everyone. It's Erica nice Lalonde. Here. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. You've been keeping well? Yes, I've been keeping well, Pretty and good. I am moving into my first house this week. Awesome. Still in school? Still in school. I'll be, school. I'll be in school all summer, actually. Yeah. So yeah. this will be like the, the gaming? You got like the Xbox and PS3 all set up? I'll be PS3 getting a PS3 going in there. Good, good. Um, Xbox, hopefully. Yeah. And um, a friend of mine, she has a Nintendo 64. So we're going to get that going in there. We're going to get a lot. Get my record player, then get brand new speakers. So instead of like in residence. That seems kind of backwards to have a record <laughs> player with brand new speakers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because like in my residence, I'm in a dorm. So you're, it's, it's very, very small. So my speakers are this big. So now in a house with two floors and it's going to be right. great. And I've got to get speakers at least, I don't know, that much bigger. You realize that the record's just going to skip, right? <laughs> Hopefully not. I know just put the subwoofer under the record player and just hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping. Well, then, you know, you can plug in my video games in there as well, so then everyone ah. will be knowing that I'm playing video games in my neighborhood. Right. Awesome. <laughs> just get, like, huge speakers set up. Very cool. <laughs> hey, everybody in the chat room. I see Swiss Andy. I see Masterminds. <laughs> TikTok. Nice yes. to see you. Uh, Scooty Duck Scooty. 42. Yeah, JP, nice to see you. Yes, it is good. Hey, Jameson, fifty-five seventy-nine. Erica, it's really nice to see you. What have we got coming up in the news? Would love to know as we uh, get into an exciting show tonight. I'm going to tell you, Eric Kidd is going to be joining us remotely tonight. We're going to be looking at some really cool stuff that's going to allow you to turn your iDevice into a guitar effects processor. So stick around. We're going to be learning all about that. We've got your viewer questions. Lots going on tonight. Uh, it's going to be a jam-packed show, so we're going to have a lot of fun. Hope you can join us in the chat room as well. So, coming up in the news tonight, Apple has bought Wi-Fi um, Slam, hoping to bring indoor mapping to their product. Nokia and Google mm. are in disagreement over what web video format to focus on for WebM. Yahoo has um, acquired Summly from its teenage creator for many millions of pounds. Oh my goodness! <laughs> A researcher has scanned every IPv4 um, address and found an astonishing number of devices using default passwords. And Ubuntu may become the national operating system in China. Isn't that exciting? So stick around later for these stories coming up later in the show. Yeah, I want to hear all about that stuff. Yeah, that sounds mm. very interesting. I want to say welcome also to our brand new uh, registered viewers on our website uh, this week at Category5.tv. Who do we have? We've got uh, joining us uh, new this week, Cape Farrell O. Metalcraft. Nice to have you joining us. W. Simpson, thank you for the easy-to-read phonetic username. Homerick, nice to have you joining us. Access Web, uh, Revelec, PC Careman, MCGI2432, and Dimitri. 
uh, all new registrants on our website, Category5.tv. Thank you for joining us and uh, for becoming a, a registered viewer. So nice to have you as a part of our community. Uh, what's really cool about being a registered viewer is that you get access to some bonus features on the website that you don't have unless you're, you're registered, which is absolutely free. And uh, so we encourage you to check that out, Category5.tv. Click on the Login and Register button up at the top. Nice to have everybody joining us. And Category 5 TV is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. And if it's, inter and it's International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Thanks, Erica. Hey, make sure you also check out our mobile site. We're looking at some mobile devices tonight. But if you've got one, go to m.cat5.tv. That's going to get you on to uh, the mobile website. You can watch live. You can watch it uh, after the fact. Check out our, our newsroom. Check out my blog. It's all there at m.cat5.tv. We've got to take a real quick break. And uh, after that, we're going to be back uh, and we're going to throw over to Eric Kidd as we look at uh, this amazing group of devices that's going to allow us to turn an iPad, an iPhone, an iPod Touch into a multi-effects processor. That's great for musicians out there. Uh, yeah, it's going to be <laughs> excellent. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this. At EcoAlkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here, here, and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com this is Category 5 Technology TV. We are online at www.category5.tv and we're looking at kind of a, a grouping of devices here tonight and software, uh, a, an app for iOS mm -hmm. uh, from two different companies that are going to turn your iDevice into a multi-effects processor for your guitar or bass guitar. Really, really cool stuff. I think this is the first time you've ever seen this. I've this never is, even seen this before. I think we're going to start with, with the Jam Up line of products. What Jam Up does, now this is the Jam Up plug, and this is uh, available for about 20 bucks. I'm going to pull this out of the box here. Compatible with uh, uh, any generation of iPad, iPhone 3GS, iPhone 4, 5, 4S, all that stuff, and 4th Gen and up iPod Touch. That's all there is to it, folks. That's, That's perfect. It's Look small, at that. compact. Nice and tiny. Okay. What is it? Well, this is actually a quarter inch input for your guitar and an eighth inch output for a pair of headphones or you can use an adapter so that you can actually plug it into an app. And this turns your eye device into a capture device for, you know, any quarter inch input. There you go. And it's only 20 bucks. Now, Eric is going to actually be looking at one of these. We've sent one over to uh, Angus Borden Music for him to take a look at. And that will literally turn it into a capture device. You can use it with you know, any of the software that will allow you to record from an external microphone. Right? Cool. That comes with a free piece of software called uh, JamUp XT. It's an app available in the iTunes App Store. Um, there's also a commercial version, which we'll be looking at a little bit later as well. Okay, so that's that. That allows you to capture your guitar, play it through the app. It's low latency, no latency from what we could tell. Mm -hmm. What else have we got here? We've got the AirTurn BT-105. This is really cool. I'm going to explain a little bit about this. What is so set. Yeah, what is so cool about this? It looks like a guitar pedal, right? Better. It's light. Okay. This module right here is called the AirTurn BT-105. It's a Bluetooth module that was developed specifically for musicians, worship leaders, uh, people who operate teleprompters and things like that to be able to control an iPad or an iDevice mm -hmm. with their feet. Why did they develop that? They developed it because Eric Kidd is standing there jamming and he's using his iPad for music nowadays, right? Instead of printed sheet music. Mm -hmm. So if he wants to flip to the next page on the sheet music, or if you're a piano player and you need to flip the page, what do you got to do? Stop playing, flip the page, right? Mm -hmm. What this was developed for was to allow you to flip the page, air turn, that's the name of the company, right? And then all of a sudden, JamUp said, you know what? This is Bluetooth. Let's take it. Let's amalgamate our two products together. So we've got our 
capture uh, hardware, our processor software, and then a Bluetooth pedal that is wireless and going to allow us to control our guitar pedal. How cool is that? That is awesome. There are a few different models of this. The, the two-pedal model, of course, entirely wireless, uh, starts at about $120. This particular version has four pedals, as you can see, mm -hmm. and it's $160 for this particular model. But they start around one, $115, $120. Uh, we're going to give you all the website addresses as well. Just if you want to check them out right away, uh, right away. This is AirTurn.com for this device, and this guy here and the software is PositiveGrid.com. So check that out. And we're going to just throw over to Eric. Uh, he, as I said, was at uh, he's at AngusBordenMusic.ca. Um, so Eric, we're going to throw it over to you, and uh, let's take a look at how this thing operates. Hey, thanks, Robbie. Yes, I'm Eric Kitt, and I'm out here at. Uh Angus Borden Music and my friend Keith White has uh, allowed us uh, to come in and do a little review on uh, uh, a product called the Jam Up Plug and also the Air Turn, uh, which is a stomp box uh, effectively that you can run through your iPhone or your iPad. So whether you're a salesman or a road musician, if you're on the road and you're sitting in your hotel and you don't want to plug in the amp because mm -hmm. nobody likes that. You can uh, take this little device, which is the Jam Up Plug, and with your i device, whether that's an iPhone or an iPad, um, you can hook that in there, and with a quarter inch jack, just your regular guitar plug, uh, you can plug it into there, and then from there, if you choose, you can plug that into an amplifier or perhaps your headphones, and you can have effects and uh, the software that does everything I'm going to show you today, this is the free version that I'm uh, talking about, uh, does all kinds of great effects. There is a commercial version which has more um, features, but we're going to talk about the free one today. Let's add the amp in there so we can 
change the amp if we want with our foot or with just tapping one of these. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to amp effects. You can see that I can actually edit what each of those effects does. So if I, I have the amp in on pedal 3 and you see it highlights there. So got a nice distortion thing going on there. And that's with the pedal out. But I can also go in here and change my input volume and my master volume and come up with a cleaner sound. Maybe something a little bluesier than, you know. And here's with it. Plus we can adjust, you know, volumes. Maybe a lot of bass if you want it. amplifier then playing here. I can go back to uh, my modulation device. You'll see that I've added reverb and, and I'm just going to hit this with my foot. Here's my nice cowboy boot. And I'm going to hit that and it drags the reverb pedal which is on this down to our chain. So I've got reverb now. And we can adjust the level of reverb, the depth and how long it goes and what kind of reverb. I stomped on it, the reverb's gone it's back okay and then in uh, pedal 2 I believe I, I put the uh, modulation so there I've got modulation and it's kind of a chorus effect um, so anyway we can add different pedals in I'm just gonna press this cool little icon the air turn icon and I get back there so I've got those three things set up and you could set up four and you can go and change them from day to day and if you wanted to you know for a different song have a different series of effects in it you can do that so we're able to do that this little uh, jam up plug I get to plug my guitar into it's an interface so I can plug it into my iPad or my iPhone the software um, which we can get free or we can buy the commercial version but the free version that's all I'm playing with today and it's great it's got the tuner it's got the effects we can also add in the air turn stomp box which uh, you know we'll add a little mo modulation take it out um, add some reverb if I want change the amp setting etc so I, I can do quite a bit um, plus I can do this in the privacy of my own home or my own hotel room or wherever I am. I can plug it in, I can put in my headphones if I don't even want to use an amp and we can uh, effectively jam out and not disturb anybody. So all in all, I'm kind of impressed with this, Robbie. Thank you so much, Eric. That thing looks incredible. I want to show you real quickly uh, just a couple of the features of the professional uh, version of this uh, application. This is the Jam Up XT Pro. One of the things that we didn't get to look at there with Eric is the fact that we can actually change our amp models and our pedals themselves. So if I actually click here on the amp and I can go choose and then watch what, look at what happens here. I've got access to all of these different amp models and then you can see that some of them are actually faded but I've got six to start right here with the pro version. So if I want to actually emulate this amp I can choose the plexiglass amp for example. There you go. Uh, or, if there's one that you want and it's not currently available in your app, you can actually click on the app model and you can see it, you can test it, whatever, and then you can actually, check this out, there's a built-in store which allows you to purchase amp models and effect models. <laughs> if you can imagine, I mean, you think about a, a guitar effect pedal. If you want to add new effects and things, you've got to buy another pedal for the chain. Another pedal. You quite often have to deal then with, you know, the analog noise of having more pedals in your chain and then you've got to actually physically buy the pedal. They're very, you know, $150, $200 per pedal. That's exactly what I was going to say when you mm -hmm. told me that the price of the final product for $120 is a great price. Yeah, for the two pedal model, $120, bucks, 4 pedal that we're looking at today is $160, $160. plus the $20 for the, for the capture device. Now, if you want this professional software, it's like 8 bucks in the Apple iTunes store, but check out what you can do. So let's say we go into effect models. 
in the built-in store and you can see all the different types of effect pedals that you can purchase. Now a lot of these are in fact included with the professional version but you'll see installed, installed, installed and if you want one, here's one here for example let's say we want an auto wah pedal we can actually add that for only three dollars so we're, we're talking about buying a pedal and adding it to your chain for $150, $200, $3, and you add a digital version of that pedal, and it's really quite good quality. Uh, Swiss Andy was wondering in the chat room, well, what's the quality like? It actually sounds really, really good. Just of course, listening to Eric <clears throat> play was yeah. great. And like that's with a, a camera microphone mm -hmm. picking it up right now. Imagine this plugged directly into headphones or plugged into a, you know, if you want to do some home recording or whatever. Yeah, you can directly plugged into your mixer would be great. Even right into your sound card's line input mm -hmm. and be able to jam it that way and then use your computer's uh, headphone jack to listen, press record, and... You're, you're flying, right? And it's got some really cool features too. Speaking of jamming, you can actually load up sound files and jam along with them. Um, so you can actually, you know, play along with your favorite soundtracks or whatever you want to do. There's just a ton of great features there. But really, really impressed with this. Uh, again, the Air Turn from AirTurn.com. This is the pedal unit. And understanding kind of the relationship between these, this was not developed for this particular purpose, but then it was realized that, you know what, this is really fantastic for this. Really perfect. Now, Heather, I don't know if you can actually see this, but looking at the architecture of these pedals, they're actually very, they're silent because there's no hinges. Can you see that? He's and pressing if you at home, down on yeah. it and you still can't even hear. I'm going to hold sound. it up to my microphone right up close here. And I'm actually pushing down on the pedal just like you would. You hear nothing? There's nothing there because it, it's just, it's the type of PVC plastic that it is. It's a little bit flexible enough that it pushes down on the sensor and it's good to go. So really good quality Swiss Andy. This is, I mean, this is hard, you know, hard plastic. It's, it's, it's not like it's made of metal or anything like that, but it's, I can't see that breaking anytime soon. I mean, you'd have to be really rough with it. And for what this is, it's not something that you're, you know, you're slamming around on the stage, right? This is something that you're, you're, you're be practicing with and, yeah, exactly. and it gives you the opportunity to try out new pedals before you go out to even purchase them. Oh boy. But you might find you don't, you don't need to. You but no, I, I think to. even in a, a real, you know, standing up on a stage, jamming and stuff, it's, it's quite solid. It's very solid. And it's built in such a way that it's, you know, you can, you can move stuff around if you really wanted to or build it onto a different board, uh, however you want to do it. So really cool stuff. I want to say thanks tonight to uh, Keith at AngusBordenMusic.ca. Uh, and Borden is spelt with an E, so B-O-R-D-E-N. AngusBordenMusic.ca. Thank you so much for the use of your facility. Eric Kidd, thank you for jamming for us. You are the best, yes. man. I mean, that, uh, that plan is just astounding, and we appreciate you taking a look at the device. And, of course, check out AirTurn.com for the pedals and uh, PositiveGrid.com for the capture device and the software as well. The software, Jam Up XT, is available for free in the iTunes uh, App Store. You can grab it, or you can get that professional version to be able to get those extra amp models and extra pedal models and be able to uh, really uh, manipulate your sound in a, in a very cool way. So, Excellent stuff. Thank you so much. All right, well, we uh, should really head into the news, and then we're going to, uh, right after that, we've got your viewer questions tonight, lots to cover. Okay, so go. for the newsroom. You ready for it? We are ready. So tonight in the newsroom, so Apple um, has bought indoor mapping specialist Wi-Fi Slam, and as it looks to expand its maps product to complete with Google. Uh, the, ac the acquisition could allow the company to offer maps within buildings with an, eight, an accuracy of 8 feet. Google, really? Yeah, Google has stepped up its efforts to add indoor locations to its already huge Street View product. According to the Wall Street Journal, Apple paid $20 million for the Wi-Fi slam. Wowzers. And we, we kind of have you know, suspicion on how this is going to go. Mm -hmm. You know, Apple has had its stab at mapping software in the past. And, and while that looks good, we know it's probably going to end up more like that. <laughs> <laughs> you might get to around the corner to where you got to go. but you're, Just be you, careful. Watch you, out for the cliffs. <laughs> 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 That's happened to me. <laughs> it actually has. 
<laughs> so Nokia and Google have clashed over software that is a part of free to use video encoding technology. Google wants its video coding program called VP8 to be a core part of the WebM proje project that is making web centered video production tools. Nokia says its own key uh, patents that define parts of VP8. Uh, VP8 has filled an official um, objection to Google's plan, hoping to stop Google software from replacing more open alternatives. Mm. An app created by UK teenager has been acquired by Yahoo in a deal worth dozens of millions of pounds. 17 year old Nick uh, Dial Dialzio, suddenly app which launched when he was just 15, summarizes news stories from popular media companies. Uh, following the accusation, the app itself will now close, but its features will be used in mobile products at Yahoo, oh. where the young developer have been given a job. Something's pretty cool, like that it's able, I mean, the, the kid started this thing when he was 15, amazing, mm -hmm. and now has made millions and millions of dollars and got a job for life practically you know working for yahoo how awesome is that that's great but it actually takes it aggregates a bunch of news stories and l summarizes them almost magically it's amazing but it's a shame to hear that they're actually going to shut it down and just acquire the technology and i guess assimilate it into their own software but that's kind of too bad for its users i think well, yeah, because then you won't have the original <coughs> layout. You would have a more preferable Yahoo layout. So how right, yeah. you would have to kind of mm. accept the fact that if you... It's a Yahoo app now. Yeah, yeah, it's a Yahoo app now. So if you don't have a Yahoo as your web browser, then you're just going to kind of have to accept that layout as mm -hmm. the app now. You don't get the original one as anymore. I guess this kid is kind of set for life, though. So he'd probably yeah, be thinking, you know what? Eh, I kind of sold I out my, my company, but cool. <laughs> I, I heard, you know, he's, he's got a lot of people that started working with him on this yeah. on the Sunly application, too. Uh, and, and Yahoo actually is going to integrate some of them into the staff as well. So, very good. That'd be cool. cool. He'll have a team working for him as well. Yeah. Neat. Okay. So, using custom written code, a researcher who has chosen to remain um, anonymous has sent out more than four trillion messages over the internet um, as an effort to determine how many devices worldwide are entirely unsafe and easily compromised by anyone simply using the default password for that device. Of nice. the 4.2 billion devices scanned, including yours, 1.3 billion addresses responded. Really? The scan found half a million printers, more than one million webcams, and lots of other devices, including um, set-top boxes and, and modems that still use the password installed in the factory, uh, letting almost anyone take over the piece of hardware. Often the password was an easy to guess word such as root or admin. Wow. China is working. That's crazy. Yeah. Before we move on, first of all, is it just me or does the heat map look like an octopus? I mean, come on. <laughs> that, but to think, okay, you buy a device, you put it on your network, the, say your router, right? Mm -hmm and it's got remote access to that router and you don't ever set up security on it so it has a default password they're saying that they found like like millions of devices that are set up with those default passwords you buy a printer and you think oh I'll connect it to my network and Without you never change the printer password. A password right but a router is a scary one for example because it's really just a it's a small computer so if you leave the default password and they're saying that people have so then some somebody can scan all these IP addresses and they've done it. Mm -hmm. So w what's to stop anyone else from doing it? There's only 4.2 billion of them or, what, or whatever. And they just have to go through the iterations, find one that's easily compromised and turn it into a botnet, right? Or use it to compromise your files on your internal network. Everything is plugged into your router. Your router has got a default password. They connect to the router. They can get the files through your computers and anything that's connected to your internal network, hmm. your Wi-Fi. 
That's a very interesting study because it really shows that not just every device, every device that is hooked up to your computer does need a password on it. Like for a and webcam. To change it. Yeah, yeah like in a webcam, weird. like they can find out whose webcam this is. Like in, you would never think that you, you know, like someone can um, just label you as a webcam because. Yeah, uh, I can see like an IP device. camera for yeah. sure. But a webcam is kind of surprising as well. So it, hey, if that's surprising. you, if you've got, uh, if you're a part of the octopus, folks, <laughs> time to update your passwords. All right. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. Next story. China is working with um, uh, Canon. Canonical. Can Canonical. Yeah. Um, on an open source Linux operating system customized for Chinese users. The collaboration will produce a version of, of Ubuntu called Killen which will be released next month. The deal is a part of five-year plan by China to get more people using source software, or open source software. Um, Canonical is also working with the Chinese Ministry of Industry and Information Technology on a version of Killen that will run on servers, so websites, online shops, and hosting firms uh, can adopt the software as well. The move is widely seen as an attempt by China to wean its IT sector off Western software such as Microsoft, Windows, or Mac OS in favor of more homegrown alternatives since Killen is being created at a laboratory in Beijing staffed by engineers from Canonical as well as several Chinese R&D agencies. Wow. That's awesome for them. Man, I should specify that that's spelled K-Y-L-I-N, not K-I-L-L-I-N apostrophe. So just so you know, we're not sure of the pronunciation. Maybe like <laughs> Kylin or Kylin, something Killin. along those lines. Yeah, but it's definitely going to be killer. <laughs> yeah, that's, mm. that's great. And then <laughs> you can get more stories from Category 5 uh, dot TV slash newsroom. And the Category 5... Uh, TV newsroom is researched by uh, Roy W. W uh, Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of an on-air mention, please email newsroom at category5.tv. And for the Category 5 Newsroom, I'm Erica Lalon. Erica, thank you so much. Hey, tonight's show is brought to you in part by Cordery Electric. They're powering the lights here at uh, all the way from CorderyElectric.com. Also, get your free trial of Netflix. Uh, they are still sponsoring the show. They love you guys, and they want to give you a free month's trial. So get on over to cat5.tv slash Netflix. You also see these uh, devices in the background here. These are NetTalk Duo Wi-Fi devices. Check them out at cat5.tv slash phone. Uh, the show is also brought to you by them, and uh, we are using their phone service as well. Save yourself a ton of money by switching. Go to cat5.tv slash phone. All right, loads to cover this evening. Before we get into it, I want to greet everybody who's watching on blip.tv YouTube. I know that you're watching uh, also not only uh, after kind of on demand on YouTube, but also watching live tonight. If you're that person, make sure you make note that you can also join us um, over uh, on our Google Plus Hangout, which you can find at cat5.tv slash g+. That's cat5.tv slash g+. The reason you might want to do that is because we always hang out about 10 minutes before the show and about 15 minutes after the show, have a little bit of a chat with our viewers. If you have a webcam, you can actually interact with us after the show. YouTube users can see that, but they can't interact with it because YouTube doesn't allow that. So it's on Google+, cat5.tv slash g+, to check that out. It is pretty cool. Dave Maydu, nice to have you uh, joining us there. Swiss Andy, nice to see you. Uh, people watching on firstrun.tv and Roku, it's nice to have you here as well. Thanks for joining us. I was thinking tonight, <clears throat> now I've switched over to Ubuntu recently, Ubuntu 12.10, mm. um, for various reasons. But the question has come up, we use uh, Telestream Wirecast here at Category 5 Technology TV. That software actually operates all of our cameras. It's very, very cool stuff. It runs on Microsoft Windows, and so we do have one Windows computer in the studio. But the rest of our computers here are, in fact, all Linux. Uh, so if I bring up the computer screen, for example, you know that this doesn't look like Windows at all because it is, in fact, a Linux computer. 
So one of the questions that came up recently was, okay, well, how do you actually do this? Because you're using all Linux computers. Are, are you running cables out of each computer through HDMI and into capture devices? Do you have like a, a capture device that is able to capture 200 different computer screens? The fact is, is that Telestream Wirecast includes some software with it that is called Desktop Presenter. And it is for Windows and Mac. And so you think, well, okay, well, and this is why the question came up. How do you do it to use that? to make it stream your Linux screen over to Telestream Wirecast. What Desktop Presenter does is it allows you to capture your screen on any computer through your LAN and broadcast it to Telestream Wirecast in such a way that it operates just like a camera. So I can actually switch to it in my sources. So if I want to switch, I just click, and there's my computer screen. And then I click again, and there's I am back to my camera. How cool is that? Now. In Linux, because there is no Linux version of Desktop Presenter, what we actually have to do is we have to grab the Windows version. So I'm going to go into my C drive on the Windows computer. This is my Wirecast computer. Go into Program Files x86 into Telestream Wirecast. And within that folder, you're going to find something uh, called codebook.dll. I'm going to just create a folder on my desktop. Uh, I'm going to call it Desktop Presenter. This is where I'm going to copy everything to. So notice I've got a, a licensed copy of Telestream Wirecast installed on this computer. Now there's a couple other files that I need there in the uh, RSRC, the resource folder. Just hit uh, D to jump down. You need desktoppresenter.exe and the uh, desktoppresenterhook.dll. So copy those and paste those ones uh, into there as well. So now I've got all the files that I need in order to basically transfer desktop presenter over to any Windows computer or Linux because what we're actually going to do is we're going to use a program called Wine and it allows us to run Windows programs on Linux. How cool is that? So now I can actually copy that program, what, I, what we just created, the desktop presenter folder, onto my Linux machine. Um, so we'll just browse over to that on my network. There it is. So I'm actually going to cut it and uh, throw that into my home folder. OK. And the other thing that I want to do here, you see that there's a couple spaces in the file names. Just to keep things simple, I'm just going to remove those spaces as well. Uh, and that will just allow me to type it in a little bit easier in the, uh, in the terminal. Now I'm, I'm going to make the assumption that you've already installed Wine, the program that allows you to install uh, or run Linux applications on my Linux computer, the way to do that is to actually bring up terminal. So if you haven't done this already, this is all you need to do. sudo apt-get install wine, just like that. Once you have that program installed, you'll see if I hit enter, it's just going to tell me that, hey, you've already got the latest version because I've already got it installed. See that? Wine is already the newest version. I've installed it, so I don't actually need to um, to do that. You may need to, so I wanted to show you that. So now that I've got Wine installed, now let's actually bring up that folder again. I'm going to go there through Terminal, actually, and go into Desktop Presenter. Note that I removed the spaces there. And I'm going to type in Wine and then DesktopPresenter.exe. And you'll see one of the things that's happening here is that I'm missing msvcm90.dll. This is a common little issue with uh, wine is that you might be missing something. So I'm going to run what's called wine tricks. It comes with it. And uh, we want to actually go into default wine prefix and then install a Windows DLL or component. And scroll down here, we're going to actually find VC run 2008 because that particular file we're missing is a part of Windows Visual C++. So we just highlight that one, VC run 2008, and then hit OK once we've hit that checkbox. Nice and simple stuff. That's now going to allow us to install that Microsoft runtime. Just go through the prompts just like any other Windows installer. Nice and simple. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try running it again. Uh, we can close out of Wine Tricks now. And I'm just using the default Ubuntu repositories here, Dave may do. We're not using a PPA or anything. So now I'm going to run that command again, and you'll see that it actually loaded just fine. Uh, on my Linux machine, I'm going to turn on 3D compatibility because I want to be able to uh, send the signal of, uh, you know, comp is and other kinds of tr transparencies and cool effects and things that come with, uh, with my Linux machine out of the box. So now that I've done that, I have confirmed that it's 
able to run. I'm going to close it out now, and then I'm going to actually, uh, I'm going to rerun it, but I'm going to do so just by clicking on the application. It's an executable file, so we know it's a Windows EXE file. But now that we've got Wine, and now that we've installed VB Run 2008, we can actually just double click on it. So note the window in the bottom right is actually my capture from Wirecast. So I'm going to double click actually on the desktop presenter.exe and you'll notice instantly I've got a signal. I'm going to turn on 3D compatibility and let's just click around on my computer and see the, the kind of responsiveness down in the bottom right there. So the big window is actually my computer screen and the, uh, the little window in the bottom right is the capture as received at Wirecast. So you see that it's, it's, nearly, it's, it's instantaneous. I mean, the performance is fantastic. And this is over just, you know, I'm on a gigabit LAN, um, so I do get very good performance here. But that's all there is to it to actually get Wine to run Desktop Presenter. And now I can stream my Linux desktop over to Telestream Wirecast. And I can use that for broadcasting my screen. We here at Category 5 Technology TV, of course, we, we use that to be able to provide you with tutorials that have to do with Linux. And it's very important to us to be able to do that. That's perfect. And there you have it. So that's how you do it, folks. And thank you to those who, uh, who actually sent in that question. So. All right, so speaking of questions, we've got about 20 minutes here tonight uh, to open up the mailbag and, uh, and see what you've sent in this week. So thank you, everybody, for sending your, your questions in live at Category5.tv. And, of course, we do also watch the chat room. It's nice to see everyone. It looks something like that. And uh, if you have any questions, you can also um, post them there in the chat room, and we'll do our best to, uh, to see them as they fly by on the screen. Okay. What so do you got for me tonight? Well, we got our first question from uh, M. Allen West. Um, and it is just down here. So it says Hi, Robbie. I wrote a simple app in Zenit uh, script oh, yeah. for a script for uh, welcome artists turning um, um, off an Ani touch in Ubuntu. Uh, the code is free and open for anyone that would like to add to it. I would love to see what people come up with. I think um, some of the code could be shorter if changed to an array, but I'm not sure how to do that. I would love also to, if someone could ha change the code so Ubuntu stops turning touch back on when you do reboot. Ah. So thanks for your time, and Alan West, artist of HTTP, uh, embryo, ionicart.com. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at this real quick script. So what he's done, uh, and thank you for sending that in, yes. uh, M. Alan West, uh, has built a Zenity script to actually control uh, whether or not your Wacom tablet is, is active, which is what it sounds like. Um, let's take a look. So we've got an sh file and actually a document as well. Here we go. So I can actually, I'd be happy to share this. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Turn off touch, turn on touch. Oh, is that for, okay. Cool. What Zenity does is Zenity allows you to, um, in fact, create GUI applications from a shell script. So that's cool. So we'll, uh, we'll be happy to, to post a link to that for anyone who's using a Wacom device and wants to be able to to control that. Thank you for sending that in. Cool. Cool, that's very good. <clears throat> okay, so we got a question from 8 Miles from TJ. 8 Miles from TJ. Um, so with the last useful version of Ubuntu, um, that is Lucid 10.04 LTS, going dark in mm. March, is there a way to preserve the repositories locally for future installations? The repositories, yeah. Repositories, sorry. Um, okay, so here's what's happening. We've got Ubuntu 10.04 LTS ending. I, I don't know. Is it? Can, are the repositories still up? I hope so. I hope so, 8 miles from TJ. If they're still up, the first thing that comes to mind when you think about backing them up, you know, which is to say, okay, well, if the repositories go away, then what are, what are we going to do? We won't be able to install any of the updates and stuff. You won't be able to use that OS anymore, which is true. I mean, that's the direction that they're pushing here, right? Uh, apt on CD comes to mind. APT on CD. And just as Erica was reading the question, I just went into Ubuntu Software Center just to see if it was available. And it is. Uh, and this is uh, for removable repositories which basically is to say it takes 
the repository and makes a disk based on that repository. So you'd be able to actually make it so that it's, you know, you pick all the packages that you want and then you create a DVD that has all those packages. So that's what comes to mind when I think about being able to back up a repository, apt on CD, and it is available in the software center. So, uh, and of course, any Debian-based distro should have that in the in whatever installation program you're using. So, cool. Cool. I hope that helps. So we have another question. Awesome. Um, so it says, "Hi, Robbie. In episode 280, you write blip.tv and therefore category five technology TV is now mm -hmm. available on iOS, Android, Kindle, and Xbox. Right. Okay, but it doesn't work on my Linux Mint 13 anymore. Mm. Can I still watch the show by selecting notes and finally YouTube, but a via blip, I just hear the sound. Do you know why? Right. Okay. Well." I think what you're describing there is a, uh, a an issue that occurred when Firefox and some of the other browsers made some changes, and they all kind of surrounded uh, Google and YouTube's advertising. And I think maybe YouTube it f itself actually made some changes to their system so that basically what they wanted to do is create a way to block um, people from circumventing the advertising that you see on YouTube. Now, in our case, of course, we're not circumventing. We want you to see the advertising because that's what pays, you know, it helps pay for the show. It's, it's very important that you see that advertising and click on it. Um, but that said, because everything's embedded into our website, if you have an ad blocker or some other kind of strange thing going on, which is why I bring up some of the updates that happened with uh, Chrome and Firefox and Ice Weasel and things that, that caused a little bit of an issue. So that has since been uh, remedied. So if you go to category5.tv now, uh, you should be able to click play and you'll see that it actually comes up just fine. And there's our YouTube window. There you go, the cartoon from last week. So category5.tv, everything is working great and we showed some great new features on there um, last week and we're always expanding the website. So really excited to, to have everything <laughs> kind of growing all the time. And it's a challenge sometimes, I'll be honest, to, to keep up with when this kind of thing happens because you've got to be on top of, you know, when people change, you know, YouTube yeah. changes the way things operate. And so we're, you know, always trying to be proactive and make everything work as well as possible for you. And we appreciate you emailing us. I'll just make mention, Mike Davis was instrumental in, uh, in helping us fix that problem one of our viewers who simply you know even not as a programmer but just as a, a viewer just sending information back and forth and and doing some testing for us because uh, he was experiencing the problem as well so thank you to to mike as well for for sending in his feedback thank you so we got we got a question from smitty smith hey smitty smith uh, um What is it, Erica? I just purchased a 4 2 B truck. <laughs> oh, she was waiting I, for me to prompt her. No, no, I was waiting. <laughs> Aren't you going to ask, Robbie? <laughs> well, All you right. should ask. Yeah, us, okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll be more polite next time. Oh, there is a question? <laughs> what could it be? <laughs> there is a question. <laughs> it's just I couldn't understand the question. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a question. She's pre reading your questions. That's what's happening. <laughs> A so question. if it's a long question, she's going to be staring like a deer in a, hail, in a headlights there for a long time. So keep them short, folks. Keep them short. <laughs> it's all right. I like the long <laughs> It just it didn't make sense, but it makes sense now. Oh, okay. Excellent. <laughs> After a couple reads, I, it made sense. <laughs> so so from share. Do Smitty share. Smith. Yes, hey, Smitty Smith. I just purchased an F. <laughs> TB drive for a massive storage. Because that didn't make any sense to me. Uh, let's see. Oh, a four, a four terabyte. Okay. Four terabyte. Okay. You guys in your short forms, come on. Yeah. Come on, You're folks. You're killing me. Because there is a 2.2 terabyte drive limitation. How exactly yes. do I format <clears throat> this drive? Um, I would prefer using GUI, but I'm mm -hmm. great at copy and paste. Okay. Well, how are you at 
typing verbatim to what I show you on the screen. Will that work? GUI, I'm not too sure. Um, because GPartEd, I believe, falls back onto tools that um, are... It, I don't think that it has the ability... I'm going to pull it up here on my screen. I don't think it has the ability to format outside of the uh, MS-DOS uh, uh, partition system. So... Take a look at my hard drive here. I'll show you what's happening. If I here's my SDB drive, device information. Notice the partition table. Even though my file system itself is what is it? EXT2, right? Which is Linux, but my partition table is MS DOS, and MS DOS, as you can imagine, has I think it's a two terabyte limit. Might be three. Um, I'm not sure. I don't have a four terabyte drive. 4 terabytes. That's massive. It is. It's wild. So you see what's happening there is that it's an MS-DOS partition table. So we need to get your hard drive out of the MS-DOS partition table environment. We need to switch it to something that's going to actually support what you need, which is uh, GPT, I think, GUID partition table. So in order to do that, let's bring up terminal again. We're going to do a few things through the terminal tonight because it's fun. So let's just say we know now I'm going to here's a little disclaimer for you. I know that we have a small one at the end of the show. What I'm going to show you is entirely destructive. This will destroy everything on the hard drive that you specify for it to do. Okay? So if you're not sure, get out now. That's that's my disclaimer. So, okay, you need to know what hard drive it is you're going to format. So, be it SDB1, uh, like SDB, SDC, all right? So, make sure, if you don't know what that means, stay away from what I'm about to show you. I'm not going to explain it because that's too dangerous. Okay. So, I know that mine is SDB. I'm not actually going to do it because I don't want to wipe out my hard drive. What I would do is, first of all, we need to make a GPT. So, we need to go sudo because we need to be super user, and we need to use the GNU part ed not G part ed, but the GNU part ed application. So it's just part ed in terminal. And we would go dev SDB if that's my hard drive. Okay, notice I'm not specifying a partition. That is obvious. Uh, then we need to make label GPT. Okay, so you will hit enter on that. I will not if SDB is your drive. Now make sure that that is specifically your hard drive. Okay, so next command. We're going to use part ed again because we need to actually create the primary partition. So we're going to go, uh, again, dev sdb. And we're going to go make part oh, primary because we're creating the primary partition. Let's say you want to do ext4. That's what we're going to do for this example because it's a little more modern. Uh, and we're going to start at zero and go 100% of the drive. So we're going to fill all four, uh, all four terabytes with the partition table that we're creating right now. Okay. So now that we've done that, because you're going to hit enter on that, now we're going to actually format the drive. So this is where we're not going to use part of We're going to use make file system dot ext4, because that's what we're going to be creating here, dash v dev sdb. So this is actually going to format that drive, entire capacity, 4 terabytes, and you're going to have access to that drive as a 4 terabyte drive in Linux. It's at ext4. The, the issue that you're going to run into, obviously the 4 terabyte drive can't be your boot drive. It's got to be like a data storage drive or something along those lines. I think a lot of biases are going to have big trouble with you if you try to make it your boot drive. Uh, but makes a great storage drive. Uh, make sure you're keeping a backup. What are you going to back up to if you ever fill that up? You're going to have to have like a couple of these laying around just in case. Your sectors are so close together. They're so itty bitty that it's like one little scratch deletes m millions of megs. I, I don't want to see what you'd have <laughs> lying around like to, to back that Imagine up. Imagine backing it up. Like if you had a four terabyte drive in your computer, this is the risk that you run is then you tend to <laughs> fill it, right? You just tend to keep putting things on it. All your family photos, everything just goes on that drive because it's got so much space. And then where do you back them up to if there's if that hard drive crashes? That's scary. But that's where it is. So backups are very, very important. I guess that could be a problem in the future if people start, Definitely a big start problem. getting more. Like not a lot of the normal users, like just I would say just regular users have even a terabyte. Uh, drive mm -hmm. in the first place. I've taken the, the opposite approach. In my computers, I even in the, the system that we use to broadcast the show, I have a 120 gigabyte 
hard drive. And there's a reason for that, because I don't need a lot of storage space, because where do I want to store my stuff? I want to store it on the server, mm-hmm. which is an unraid server, so I have single drive fault tolerance, which means out of the seven or eight hard drives that are in it, one of those can fail, and then I just replace it and I lose nothing. It's fault tolerance. So that means it's a safe place or a safer place for me to store my stuff than a single hard drive in my computer. So I keep all, to keep myself safe, I put all small hard drives in my computers, Mm -hmm. which means I can be doing SSD, which means things run faster, which is bonus anyways. And then I just store everything on the server. And then I back up the server every day. So, but yeah, when you start getting into huge hard drives like that, that can be dangerous. But now you know how to format it. And create it uh, with GPT in such a way that you'll be able to use all four terabytes. Good luck. Let us know how that goes. Sorry, I don't have a GUI solution, but I think that's fairly straightforward anyways, using part it. Yeah. All right, do we have any more questions that have come in? No, we don't have any more questions nope. for today. So. Oh, well, what did we have? But we did get that um, Swiss Andy created a remix. A of, remix of the from cate- Swiss Andy? From the Category 5 theme music, uh, oh, yeah? Cupid's Migration. Yeah, from Mick Rippin, sure. And um, he sent us some links, so maybe in, in an upcoming show or something. <laughs> Why not on this show? Or this show, we could just rate now we'll play yeah this. okay and then can Sweet. we can we link to this what's the license here swiss andy um i don't the license is the our license under ccby i felt oh, okay. it was okay to recycle the episode attribution. for my cool. purposes we'll give him credits to category five thanks buddy Okay, I'm, gonna see awesome. I, I'm, I'm looking at interested this. I wanted when a, to look when at a it. viewer puts together a yeah. remix or a mashup, or uh, we've received lots of you know photo collages and things. People have put things together from from pictures. We encourage you to send in that kind of stuff because it is you know it's fun for us to to see that, and we love and sharing it with our viewers too. I do the same. Oh, thing. there's Swiss Andy in the chat room. Says, "Here's the license. Do what you want. <laughs> do what you want." Just All right, do let's it. see. It. Sweet. Oh, I even got on YouTube. Oh, it's just... How does that work? <laughs> Press record and let it go kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Here we go. Through the magic of television. Yeah. Just something like that. Right. <laughs> Swiss Andy, I want to hear more. That's <laughs> that is awesome. Pretty sweet. So what we're going to do is we're going to post a link to that YouTube video <laughs> in the show notes for episode number 288. So if you want to give it a listen uh, and uh, give some props out to Swiss Andy, make sure you go over to the show notes at category5.tv. Look for episode number 288, and we'll have a link there so that you can hear the full-length video. Cool. Thank that you very cool. much for sending that in. Yeah, we're going to start calling Swiss Andy DJ. DJ Swiss Andy DJ. rocks. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> oh, well, All right. Good. Any other comments or questions in the chat room? We've got a whole two minutes for we you. We've got two minutes, so if there's any other questions. I'll post that link in the uh, in the chat room here as well, just so that you have it, folks. There you go. Okay, good. Yeah. Just a reminder, get on over to our website, category5.tv. Sign up as a registered viewer, and you'll be able to actually receive a notification before each show. Uh, which is really getting really cool. Uh, I, I was speaking to the chat room a little bit before the show, and you know people are receiving this email that you know as a registered viewer, you just go into your profile and just activate this, and you're able to receive a notification at, at the beginning of the show, basically an hour before we start, that says, by the way, here's what the show is about. Uh, we're going to have Erica Lalonde on the show. We're going to be talking about this pedal thing from Jam Up and Air, uh, the uh, Air Turn device as well. That's you know, perfect. this all comes out in an email. So, you know, how cool is that to receive that just before the show? Just to remind you. Well, cool. yeah, then you can kind of get questions together related to the show. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, <laughs> and it's a free email that you receive. So, mm-hmm. you know, check that out, category5.tv. Thank you, everybody. It's been wonderful having you here tonight. What is coming up next week? Erica, you, uh, you've got your notes there. Okay, so next week, Hillary and Robbie <laughs> will be checking out a classic-looking Lennox desktop and using Mate 
Yeah, and me. The Gome Two Fork. Don't miss it next week on <laughs> Category Five. The Gnome Two Fork. What is that? Gnome Two. I love Gnome Two and Gnome Three and and Unity. I just I just could never quite get there. Uh, Mate is a fork of that, so it's it's based on Gnome Two. We're gonna be looking at a distro that is uh, that's using that. So check it out. That's happening next week with Hillary Rumble. So thanks everybody. Have a wonderful week. Erica, always a pleasure having you here. Yes, it was nice to be here. Actually, today I've been here for a year. Is today the day? Today is the day. Oh, we would have worn furry hats. <laughs> yeah, wow. No, today is That's the amazing. Day. Well, happy anniversary. Oh, no. I, just, I, felt, I don't know. I was coming down on the bus. So I was like, it's been a year. It's been a year. Wow. Been a year, been a year. That's hard to believe. <laughs> Isn't that hard to believe, eh? Wow. Yeah. Well, it's good. Um, now that you know, I'm all settled in, I'll be here making a lot more appearances through Wonderful. the summer now. Excellent. Yeah, we've got you on the schedule as well. So uh, you can check that out again on our website as well. So. Take Always care, keeping buddy. you in touch. Always. <laughs> Always. Thanks, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a good show, guys. Have a good night. Have a good one. See ya. We hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local showtimes in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.